Okay, well I figured out what the problem was. Now, in the back of the camera, on the back of that shutter where you can hardly see anything now, we have this arm here that's lifted by the capping plate. Now as that lifts up, it clears the little rack that's in there. And as the rack runs across, that's what releases the shutter and allows it to finally fire. What I decided it was, was that the end of where that boss is on that arm, it needed a touch of lubricant so that the rack would clear underneath it smoothly. And as soon as I put a little bit of molybdenum and paste there, no more problem. So it's running nicely, nice and smoothly. No delays. The shutter fires pretty much instantaneously there now, that exactly as it should do. So that's that little problem out of the way. And it means I can carry on closing the camera up. Well, we have two screws that go on the chrome trim at the front here. I'll get them fitted. And the next task after that is to, uh, I think we can put the base plate on the camera because it hasn't got its proper base plate at the moment. We've got the cutaway one which I used for testing purposes. So I'll take this off and fit the proper base plate which I've got here cleaned up and ready to go. And when that's done, I've got to turn my attention to the finder. Well, I know that the prism finder in here, the screen, has got some unfortunate piece of rubbish sitting on it, which needs to be dealt to. And we can't do that from the outside, so I'm going to have to pull it all apart. Now, the reflex four is by the finder is by nowhere near as complex as on the Reflex 3S and so forth. But um, it has its own quirks. Get this frame counter popped in. That button's not picking up for one reason or another. Let's see if we can figure out why. Oh, now it is. It's not running its track. There we go. Get these screws fitted back. I won't put the leatherette on at this stage because I may need to adjust the position of the reflex mirror if the image at the film plane and the image in the finder do not match. They should do, of course, but you never know with the cameras what may have altered. We know that the film plane to lens flange distance is correct because I set that carefully. We don't know what it was beforehand and we don't know if somebody took the lens and adjusted it so that the image on the screen looks correct. Not necessarily the image at the film plane. So there's always a few unknowns with cameras. Like most things in this world, if everybody did their job perfectly, life would be much simpler. But people don't, for various reasons. So you need to be on your guard for what might be imperfect that you can have to deal with. That screw's a bit tight to go in there, it's almost like it was bent.
Now, yep, the frame counter pops back to the start position nicely. That centers up on the numbers nicely, so that's good. I'll get these last remaining screws in here on the base plate. There were certainly at least two flavors of, flavors of adhesive used on the uh, base plate of this camera. So it certainly had some repair history. Of course it, it just serviced the shutter on one of these cameras. You need to do pretty much what I've done. You need to strip the camera right down. I mean there were probably shortcuts you could take but there weren't many of them. Okay, that's good. I'm happy with that. We'll call that body good for the moment. I need to look at this prism. Right, let's see what we've got. Now one of the mirrors has already popped off, as we discovered earlier. That came off here. Okay, so all this is all a little bit delicate. But two screws hold this bracket on that holds the prism down. This little plastic prism here is for viewing your um, meter, exposure meter. Let's screw loose. Yes, it is. Okay, so that frame fell away from underneath. Yeah, there's a mirror missing there. So we've got one of the mirrors. That one looks like it's gone. Okay, so on this camera you wouldn't have been able to see the... Oh, there it is. It's fallen off there. So we've got two mirrors to put back. Split this off. Okay, so all this is coming apart. So the sticky tape is not sticking anything. It pro possibly means that it would it already parted company. Somebody just hadn't bothered to uh, remove it. Want rid of these loose bits of tape. The prism looks good. I'll be very careful to put that to one side. I don't want to damage that in any way. Here's the bracket that holds it down. There's the rear mask for the finder. This is the frame here that the fight the prism sits on. So I'll peel the tape off that. Now normally with the metal frames on the other reflex models I clean everything with um, acetone to get rid of all that residue of adhesive of course I can't use acetone on a plastic piece like that so that means that I will have to be or basically I'll have to leave that rubbish on there because I, I have no convenient way of seeing the back of it well, I've got something I can try okay so looking in here I'll zoom you in. I don't know if you better see it or not. Yep, 
Yes, you can. You see that speck about there? That's a speck of something on the screen. Now that's in between two components. So I've got to have this apart to get that out. So I'll just get rid of that tape and that tape. Now we've got clear windows here and here. Now take care not to get anything smeared on them because otherwise you might not be getting the smears off afterwards. And those that's where you're viewing your numbers. You're actually seeing through there when you're looking at the aperture and uh, shutter speed numbers. Right, so we've got a clip holding this condenser in place. It looks like two actually. Let's see what we get. So I'm just going to... And clip those. There's one. Two. Alright, so what have we got here? We've got a Fresnel lens. And here we have the, the ground glass surface. This is this is some hard plastic stuff, and I don't think that's glass at all. But you can see that little blob of something sitting on there. That'll probably blow off. And I don't want to have to wash this or poke at it with cotton buds if I don't need to. Some of these surfaces are a bit delicate. So let's see if that'll blow or what. Yeah, it does. Look, it was loose on there. So if it hadn't been for that little speck, I probably wouldn't need it to have taken this apart. Right. I can see a few bits of uh, marks on that, that Fresnel lens there. So I may need to clean that. If I'm going to clean it, I'm going to clean it in the ultrasonic cleaner. And it'll have to be suspended so that the surfaces don't touch anything. This outside surface, I can see a few specks on it. And I can see a few flecks on that Fresnel lens there too. So I'm going to clean this in the ultrasonic cleaner. This one, I don't think I'll need to. That condenser with the ground glass type surface on it and the prism all looks very clean. Holding that up to the light, I don't see any imperfections on that. It's only this piece here. So I'll have to go and clean that. The frame looks very clean. Um, as I say, I'm reluctant to splash acetone around on here, which would be my normal choice. Let's have a little look at this. No, that's okay. I was just checking that the buffers were there, top and bottom. They're okay. Alright, let me get in and clean this in the ultrasonic cleaner and come back. Hopefully I can reassemble it after that. Well, unfortunately I failed to record the process of getting that prism back on there. But um, it went very smoothly, I have to say. I also put the meter on there while I'm at it. And that appears to be reasonably accurate. Which is good. So now, I really don't have much more to do to hear this um, in terms of reconstruction, letterettes aside, except clean up the top cover, fit that back in place. So that's pretty much the next thing to do. I mean, I've got to connect my flash wire there, but I do have, I can, I can solder it or I can use this terminal They'd used both. Um, I might put a piece of sleeving on there and solder that. I think it's probably tidier. And I've got the window that's fallen in from the meter needle window at the top there. That's fallen in. That's just held in with two spots of glue. So I've got to glue that back. But 
I think I'm on the home straight really. This um, is a nice Retina Reflex 4 camera is well on the way to reconstruction. It's the end of the day now and I'm just going to pack up. Tomorrow I'll finish it. Well it's a new day. I've got the uh, little meter viewing window back in place. And I'm just going to go and solder this wire on for the flash connection. I've cleaned the finder window and the meter dial window made sure that I haven't got any fingerprints on the eyepiece there for the prism everything's looking positive so all I've got to do now is solder this wire in place you can see I've got a piece of heat shrink tubing ready to go and put the top back on the camera easy should be in theory anyway as you can see I've got the wire back together so what else needs to go in here well this piece around the meter needs to go in and the wire from the flash is poking up in some uh, less than exciting place there let's see if I can get that to lie somewhere more suitable that's better Now it's sitting on top of that post. That's better. Okay, so the top cover is sitting back on. Looks nice and square. Put that screw on the top. It's usually worth getting that started first. It's got a uh, raised boss in the center. It needs to center up in that hole. It's not very good at aligning itself otherwise. Now I've got two screws here at this end. one screw at the end of the top cover at this end that's not lining up particularly well what's going on there It doesn't line up very well with that hole in the bracket. Is everything here seated correctly? It certainly appears to be. Oh, I think I can pull that into line. No. It's not going. Alright, might need to pull something across a bit. I'll just lift this top cover off and see if I can move that bracket across slightly. I don't know why it doesn't line up, but it's possible that the camera's had a thump at some stage and the bracket's been slightly bent. Which way have I got to go? Back and up. This is what we're screwing into, this thing at the end. Of course it's uh, not very robust. I'll just get a better pair of pliers and I'll twist that over. These ones should do it. That should be enough. I don't need much. I 
Alright, let's try putting that screw in first. I still can't see enough of that thread. Have another little look. Is there anything obstructing this top cover and preventing it from seating correctly? Not that I can see. That screw, I can tell by the mark of that screw on the end of the top cover there, that it was never exactly centred, so it's always been a little bit off that thing. just have to apply maximum body English I think to this to uh, get that to pick up yeah it's in flash wire has got tangled over the post again let's put that back So why the misalignment problem of that screw? I don't really know. I do know this is a relatively early example because it has no strap lugs. And um, apart from having no strap lugs, also the flash connection had been connected with a little plastic uh, connector rather than normally they're just soldered on. The vast majority of them are just soldered in place. Let's get this screwed in. Top cover's good. What do we need? The button. We need the button on the back for the meter setting. And I'm just going to use a bit of rubber and to get enough friction on there to tighten that up. I'm not going to over tighten that. I just need to make sure it's absolute, it's tight enough. One thing I can use there are these pliers that I use for doing the uh, removing the rewind button. The same size works nicely there. In order to protect the chrome, what I normally do is just take a piece of paper, cut a little slot in it, slide it in behind the button, grab the button with these, twist it up, slide the paper back out and we're in business. Sometimes it's easier if you remove your screws from the top cover so that you've got a little bit of play on the top cover before you get that thing done up. But I think we'll be okay this time. There's enough play on that that I can certainly get that tightened up. So I'll get that sorted out. Yeah, I just used a little bit of rubber sheet. Got my thumb on there, gave it a good twist. That's nice and tight. Leaves us with the joy of getting this rewind together. As I mentioned earlier this thing's got a little tiny tag on the end of it goes up through a slot in the plastic shaft and getting it aligned is always a trial. 
but if you don't get it aligned the rewind just doesn't work properly you can use it to rewind the film but it's by nowhere near as convenient so I've got to see if I can get this lined up oh I did first attempt too you can see because this sticks out through the top That's going to have a spring over it, like that. And I've got to screw this together. So here is what we need. Now this one is good, it's not broken. Frequently they're cracked. Now where's the spring for that? Oh, it's on there. Okay, so it's a little return spring here. Get this thing together. That little return spring, the button on it presses against that black plastic end. This piece here, it's got a couple of little pins on it, and you can see the slot there that goes over the, the hinge pin end, this side. So I hold that all together as one piece. bring my camera back into the picture remembering we've got a spring on here which is trying to press things away I've got to keep the down pressure with my finger from the top while I'm rotating this we don't want the knob coming apart if I've done this right we should be in business let's just see okay That didn't exactly spring up, did it? Oh yeah, that's certainly certainly popping up nicely. Let's get this thing tightened up. Now there's a spring on the uh, back of the what would be the strap plug but in actual fact is just a bracket that supports the top and that clips into this groove on the plastic knob so I'm applying some synthetic grease there and hopefully this thing will pop up nicely when I when you lean on this this pops up should pop up that high and it's to give you plenty of room to swing this thing about it's not quite popping up as much as it should do this one I think that spring might be a bit tight But otherwise that's working as it should do. And the idea of it is that the knob will pop up into a handy height to rewind the film. But the spindle is still down inside the film, allowing you to wind the film back. If you don't get that metal shaft around the right way, when this piece is up in the winding position, it's pulling this piece up where it's not contacting the center of the spool and it doesn't wind the film reliably so you end up having to use your winder down in some odd position like this which is not as designed and it doesn't work as well oh that's better that's how it's supposed to work okay so that's that rewind done which only leaves me so I've already checked the image on the screen and that's good so I don't need to adjust my mirror position it only leaves me to put the leatherettes back on the camera body and the what's this tripod socket surround has to go on here So 
So we've got the two screws for that. Okay, so I'll take that advanced lever off again. I'll give the base plate a wipe with some naphtha to remove my greasy fingerprints just so that the adhesive gets a fair crack at being able to stick to something. Pop that to one side, I'll clean up the leatherette. 